Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Zen 4 is shaping up to be absolutely huge in terms of a leap forward over Zen 3. For desktop anyway, we'll have Warhol first, which will presume to be called the Ryzen 6000 series and is naturally a Zen 3 refresh with modest IPC gains and a small increase in clock frequency. But Zen 4 is an entirely different beast sporting numerous enhancements in terms of IPC, but also benefits from DDR5 memory and an increased core count, although there's a caveat for desktop, which we'll get into in just a moment. But first of all, let's tackle some leaks from Executable Fix. He actually also provides us details on the CCD layout of the processors, but we'll get to that in just a moment. First of all, let's look at Genoa. 96 cores, 192 threads, thanks to the magic of SMT. 12-channel DDR5 memory running at up to 5200 MHz, which is pretty damn snappy. 128 PCIe 5.0 lanes, 160 though if you're running a 2P server. 320 watt TDP, although it's uh, C TDP is 400 watts, which is many watts. And, well, lastly is an LGA 6096 socket. <laughs> Just, dude. If you happen to bend one of those pins, you're going to be very, very sad trying to resolve that problem. Just RIP to any server admins who happen to bend a pin or two on an LGA 6096 socket. Just, yeah, that is not going to be fun. Anyway, furthermore, executable fix also provides details on the CCD. He claims that it's going to be an eight core CCD and AMD are not going to increase the core count. I have to say that according to what I'm hearing, I believe this is most likely true. So what I was uh, told by a couple of sources is it just doesn't really fit with what AMD are wanting to achieve and doesn't really benefit them going forward given the chiplet nature of the design. Basically, uh, the CCD count will remain the same. They will just put more chiplets on the uh, processor, and that's obviously how they're going to increase the core count to, in the case of the highest end Genoa parts, 96 cores. Okay, so what about desktop then, which I'm sure most of you are primarily interested in? So Ryzen 7000, after all, Warhol is going to gobble up Ryzen 6000. It retains still 16 cores, 32 threads that we've had for a couple of generations now. And it's based, of course, on Zen uh, 3. It's just a refresh with slightly higher IPC and tweaked uh, clock frequencies and other bits and bobs. But the core and thread count remains the same. This is for a few reasons. The first of which is that DDR4 just won't really provide enough memory bandwidth. And they just plumb don't need it to take on Alder Lake. Alder Lake has... Uh, 16 cores, 24 threads. My brain was like, brrr, they're trying to just get around the fact that it's, you know, my brain automatically is just like, 16 cores, 32 threads. No, the little cores on uh, Alder Lake are only, uh, well, just no SMT. So anyway, getting back to my point. So Ryzen 7000 then, I've been hearing for a while, AMD were considering increasing the core count. And of course they have higher memory bandwidth now, uh, thanks to DDR5, and of course the consumer-facing platforms too can go with even faster memory than what we will see with servers, despite it being most likely going to be dual channel. And AMD at this point also will be facing much stiffer competition from Intel, but there are some things against this. The first is that customers um, who buy, let's say, mainstream products aren't necessarily requiring that number of threads. In other words, games, for example, don't necessarily go across more than 16 threads even now, let alone the 32 threads that we see with the 5950X. There are some uh, users who would definitely appreciate it who are on a mainstream platform. If you're like a heavy Photoshop user, for example, or maybe you do 3D modeling like Blender and you don't really want to justify yourself, going to like Fred Ripper, then I can definitely understand the appeal of, let's say, a 24-core solution. But I reached out to some sources and found out if there is any evidence at the moment internally if AMD are increasing the core count. After all, as I said, I have been hearing now that AMD were considering it, and even um, videocars.com have uh, put out a report to say that they have possibly been hearing that we will see a 12-core uh, processor for APUs. And the answer is, at least to my knowledge, AMD are not decided yet whether they will go with a higher core count for desktop or not. It really comes down to exactly the same problems I just mentioned a moment ago, and they don't know whether it's worth it. Um, 
I personally wouldn't be surprised if we did see a 24 core model. I think that there is definitely a lot of options there and otherwise there would also be a ton of cores between uh, the high-end mainstream um, kind of processors and what we would see with we can presume the 96 cores of Threadripper well I assume it would be Threadripper Professional then again AMD could also take this as an opportunity to have let's say 16 cores on the mainstream and then have a couple of Threadripper platforms and then segment them slightly different to what they have now so for example Threadripper could start at 24 cores and then it could go up to let's say 64 cores and then we could have Threadripper Pro, which might be 48 cores to 96 cores. Again, this is not a leak. I'm just giving you an example. Personally speaking, though, I am leaning towards the fact that AMD may increase the core count. But I just want to stress, according to what I'm hearing at the moment, it has not been decided. I do find it interesting that they are sticking still to the 8-core CCD design. And AMD are going to be very aggressive going forward, I suspect, with their roadmap. I'm very interested to see how Warhol... Kind of brings things to the table and i also want to spend just a moment um warhol to my knowledge is going to release q4 so i'm getting a lot of folks asking should they just wait for warhol and my answer to that would just be it depends um i actually have a 5900x on order and the i'm still like position 400 and something and i started in like position 700 so honestly i'm just probably going to cancel it and uh, pick up Warhol myself because why not as um, yeah I already have the 5950X so if you're one of those people who are just feeling like they're just going to be waiting forever and a day it might be worth just getting Warhol or if you're not planning to build until late Q3 anyway but um, if you need a system now and you're going for a lower core count processor say a 5600X which are more readily available then yeah, I can definitely understand the appeal of just building a system and at least enjoying things. That is assuming, of course, you can get the rest of the components given even PSUs at the moment are somewhat difficult to procure. Since we're on the subject of AMD anyway, I'd like to discuss MI200, aka CDNA2. To my understanding, this series of uh, GPUs will launch end of this year, though just a quick reminder, this is for servers, RDNA3, which is for gaming, that is not going to launch until next year. But again, there have been a series of leaks for CDNA2, and these series of uh, graphics processors are just absolutely crazy. So the name of this is allegedly going to be Older Baron. No, it's not a Star Wars reference. It's in fact going to be a giant star in the Zodiac constellation Taurus. And as for the specifications, it according to the patch notes anyway, seems that we are looking at an MCM design, most likely two chiplets anyway, from what we can ascertain. Given Arcturus CDNA1 features 7,680 cores, most likely we can probably double this based on what we know for RDNA2, it, sorry, RDNA2 to 3, Doubling it would probably make sense for CDNA and also it matches up to the leaks. Furthermore, it's still going to be seeing HBM, but it's a different derivative. This time it's HBM2E. MI100 has 32 gigabytes of memory for HBM2, but HBM2E allows you to double the density of the memory. So we could be looking at up to 64 gigabytes for MI200. Also, as a quick reminder, we've even seen some evidence of MI300 as well, or if you prefer CDNA3. Over the next 12 to 24 months, AMD's roadmap will be ultra aggressive as they're going to be facing off tons of competition from Intel as well as Nvidia. And it's going to be really interesting to see how AMD can make a dent in the data center. We've already discussed how CDNA2 uh, changes some of its architecture to allow it to be more performant in certain applications and tasks. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, given that we are also going to see double the number of compute units uh, available to an application, plus obviously all of those changes which makes the uh, architecture more performant in certain applications and instructions. Combine that with tons more memory and AMD will definitely uh, be facing the pressure from both Intel and Nvidia but uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how graphics change over the next few years and while I know data center isn't necessarily as exciting including to me to be really honest with you as the you know kind of customer facing products like RDNA and Zen and whatever in a way, it's perhaps just as important to us anyway. 
well first of all let's face it most of our you know applications data uh, machine learning all of that stuff is running on this stuff anyway but furthermore for amd it's going to give them a lot of money and the more money amd are actually making it means that they can throw that into research and development and improve product which naturally do trickle down to us as end users but I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, then you know what to do. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And also ring the bell icon because YouTube land. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.